So, hello again and welcome to the seminar class. As usual, we shall start with the previous task, which was on uh, graphs. Uh, so, I will post the link um, in chat and um, we shall start. It's on, on the screen. The people in the class could also use it physically, and in the chat there is a link to the video. So, um, let's recall what we did last time and what of these problems we wish to discuss today. So, do we want to discuss problem one? So, I think we did one A and one one A, yes, and we could do one B and one C. So, in problem number one B, we have two vertices of degree three and three vertices of degree two. So, the Mm. The sanity check here is that the number of the sum of the degrees will be even, right? So the sum of the degrees here is uh, 2 multiplied by 3 plus 3 multiplied by 2. This is going to be 12. This is even. So this is okay. But does this mean that such a graph exists? Can we draw it? This is, this is contacting them. But it's it's not a guarantee that the graph exists. It's only a necessary condition. If if this was odd, it was one point A, which we did last time. This sum was odd, which meant that there was no way. So, by the way, if we have 12, then uh, the number of edges is 12 divided by 2, it's 6, right? So, this is number of edges. Okay, some question? Uh, see more? Uh, I guess it's okay to say that even it's okay, but we cannot draw it as only two words about the next. It's just a triangle. Okay, that has to do the first one. I guess can I draw it? No? Okay, I will redraw it also. Here, so the two vertices of degree three. So this should have three. These are three vertices of degree two. And what do you say? Yep, so this should be connected like this. This should be connected like this. And this should be connected like this. Okay, and the graph really exists. So this is an example. Right? Now let's for one C. So here we have one vertex of degree one, two vertices of degree two, one vertex of degree three, and two vertices of degree five. So um, again, the sum is okay. So we'll have one plus two multiplied by two plus uh, 3 plus 2 multiplied by 5. This is even. Because this is 1 plus 3 is 4 and everything else is even. Does there exist such a graph? Why? Uh, 
Yeah. So uh, if we have two vertices of degree five, and the whole number of vertices is one plus two plus one plus two is six, then this vertex of degree five should be connected to everything else, and this also. So this means that each other vertex should have a degree at least two, but there should be a vertex of degree one. This is a contradiction. So if we do not consider multigraphs or pseudographs, which uh, do, do, do not allow uh, parallel edges or uh, loops, then such a graph does not exist. Even if uh, this was even, so uh, the handshake lemma was okay, but the graph didn't exist for other reasons. This is how it works. Okay, so uh, now let's go for point number two. So 2a, we did it, we want to show 2b now, right? So we have uh, the following. We have, so we have number of, I will write a table, number of vertices with the corresponding degree. So the number of vertices here is two vertices of degree one, 10 vertices of degree four, and uh, seven vertices of degree six. And this is a multigraph. And will it always have an Euler path? So we'll always have an oil up. No, but uh, well, then again, the necessary condition holds. But will the Yeah, so yeah, if the graph is connected, we'll have it, but the graph could be not connected. Yes, if we, if we find a graph with these numbers of vertices and degrees, which is not connected, then yeah, it will not have an Euler path. Each two vertices are connected by a path. Like mm. Yeah, so, but, but these two vertices of degree one, they do not need to be connected to each other, of course. We need to find an example. So, the idea is good. That the counter example, again, we draw it in red. So, we have two vertices of degree one, and let's just connect it to one another. And then the remaining graph should also be constructed independently. How can we do it? So we have seven vertices of degree six. We can take, say, graph plus, I will do that, plus k7. It means the graph, which is a complete, so kn is the complete graph on n vertices. So k7 is a complete graph on seven vertices. Each has degree six, right? Because connected to all others in this graph. Plus we'll have K5 plus K5. We have 10 vertices. Each vertex has degree four. So this graph is not connected. And therefore it does not have an Euler path. Okay. And So this graph, by the form, by the way, is K2. It's the complete graph of two vertices, just one edge. And now we go to problem number three, and in problem number three, we'll formulate this theorem. 
how to understand whether there is an Euler cycle that this theorem that a graph G has an Euler cycle, a path, sorry, not, no, not necessarily cycle. If and only if uh, first it, G is connected, it's of course necessary. And second, uh, G has not more than two vertices of odd degree. Last time, we discussed it only in one direction. Both of these conditions are necessary, right? So if there is an Euler path, then of course the graph should be connected. And of course the second condition should hold. And by handshake lemma, the second condition is either zero or two. You couldn't have only one vertex of odd degree. Uh, so the, by the way, this could be graph, it could be also multigraph. So here, parallel edges are OK. So um, if there are two vertices of odd degree, then the, uh, this is not a cycle. There is the uh, beginning and end are different. If you have zero, then we'll have a cycle. But we didn't prove that it is sufficient. And if both hold that the cycle, the path exists, how would you prove this? So suppose that the graph is connected. So okay. So suppose for simplicity is that all vertices have even degree. No vertices of odd degree. How do we proceed? Well, I would say that if we if all vertices have even degree, then uh, there is always an out of this vertex. Yeah. Okay, so we start constructing a path, right? And we never get stuck, right? Yeah. So we go forward, we go forward. We could at some point visit the same vertex once more, right? Yeah. Then we go forward. Again, we visit the same vertex. And then we, at some point, what can we do? It's all they are even, so we never get stuck. You're right. We never get stuck in the vertex. We also, if we, if we can enter, we can leave. And at some point, what we, we can do, we can return to our original vertex. And this will happen because the graph is finite. You cannot do it for an infinite many. This uh, method is called the greedy algorithm. So the greedy algorithm just constructs the cycle. The, so here we have an Euler cycle. Uh, the, it just constructs the cycle by just adding new vertices. Gradually, just by adding new path. So it just tries to go, go, go. It always can go. Does this algorithm construct an Euler path? Euler cycle. No, but but we could. It could fail to visit some edges. Because we, we, what we know now, it is correct, it's a correct cycle, which means that it traverses each vertex no more than, each edge no more than once, right? But there could be some edges left. How do we guarantee that we traversed all the edges? And if the graph was not connected, it will be the case, because there is another connected component, and then for this connected component, well, you didn't traverse it. But here it's possible that there exist some edges which are not connected, some somewhere here. There is an edge which is not connected, which is not in the cycle. 
And the trick is that if the graph is connected and we have some edges left, then such an edge would, we can also find such an edge which is connected to our cycle, right? This is the main idea that if we, uh, our greedy algorithm could uh, not, uh, could find a cycle which is not the Euler cycle because some of the edges were not traversed. But these extra edges, at least one of them, is connected to this, to this, old, to this blue cycle, right? Because the graph is connected. And what do we do next? So it's not Euler. It was not Euler, yeah. But how can we make it better? And this is called this path augmentation. We know that this was not traversed. And then let's traverse it. Let's go again, apply the greedy algorithm starting from this point. It could, by the way, go like this. It could go like this. It could go like this. What would happen? It would return to the original point, right? So we augmented our green cycle by the red cycle, right? So now let's make it in a bigger, in a big, big bird eye view picture. So here we started with this starting point, for example, from this point. This is this blue cycle. There is another point here. where we add this augmenting cycle. These cycles could overlap, it doesn't matter. The, so the vertices could be reused. The main idea is that the, the, the edges are distinct. Now, how do we traverse the whole thing? We start from this point. We we'll first go along this cycle. Then we shift to the red cycle, and then we continue backwards. So this is first way, second way, and third way back. Is it understandable? So we augmented the cycle. We made the cycle bigger. Now what can happen next? Next again, it's either an oil cycle, right? Or we miss something. If we miss something, then we have an, another thing which here, some, somewhere here, we have a green arrow, we have a green edge, which goes somewhere outside. And again, we play the same game. We add a new cycle here and augment this cycle. So now we go like this. So from this point, we traverse and we'll have that this part will be 3, this part will be 4, and this part will be 5. So we first we have just apply the greedy algorithm, and then we apply path augmentations until our graph is fully traversed, right? Understandable? If we had... Uh, there could be also a situation when we had two points of odd degree. So this is first point is S, the second point is T, so S, T are odd, every else is even, then we do the same. We basically first we start with a path, and if it started from S it should end in T, because there are only two vertices. And then we do cycle augmentation. If this path is still, still not an Euler path, well, we start from this point and add the cycle. Then uh, again, if there is another one, we add it, add it until so. The augmentation procedure stops at some point because the graph is finite. At some point, we saturate it and obtain an Euler cycle. Yeah, all the edges. 
edges. Vertices can be visited, as you can see on the right, many times. It doesn't matter. It's oil is not Hamiltonian. It's oil of oil, the cycle, oil of path. But uh, this is how it really works here. So what did we obtain from this uh, theorem? Well, first we prove the theorem. And this theorem validates uh, task number three, right? That there exists, uh, given a multigraph, you can decide whether it has an oil of path. Because you can just check these two conditions. If they're both satisfied, the oil of path exists. If not, then it doesn't exist. And second, this theorem gives you an algorithm for finding the oil path, right? Because um, if you find an oil path, you uh, so if you apply this algorithm, you find the oil path. If you know that the conditions are satisfied, you can just so this is an algorithmic existence proof. The proof gives you an explicit algorithm of constructing the path or the cycle. So it's it's okay, right? So we learned one more algorithm on graphs. Okay. So next, I think we shall omit problem number four. If you wish to, to show it, we can do it, but uh, I, uh, probably we can just do it. You can do just finding the Hamiltonian path. If, if someone of you wants to do it, then let's do it. If not, then we'll omit it. Okay, nobody wants. Then we go for more interesting question, which is question number 5b. So 5b is that independent set problem is reducible. It exists, yes. You can just draw it. Two vertex color. Okay, so let's recall it that independent set you're given G and you are given a number K and you are trying to find whether there is a K so there is a K vertex independent set which means that there are K vertices which are not connected in G and the question is algorithmic question to understand this and vertex cover again you will have some G prime and K prime, such that uh, the K prime set of vertices which cover all edges. So independent set, the problem in set is NP hard, right? NP complete. So from this we get a corollary that vertex cover is also NP complete if we prove this. You know, of course it belongs to NP and uh, it's NP. How do you reduce? How do you reduce finding an independent set to finding a vertex cover? So yeah, I will draw, draw an example, by the way. So if you have a graph, for example, this is a graph. And we'll try to find a vertex cover. So say this is a vertex cover. We take this, uh, this vertex. Uh, it covers these edges. And now we take this vertex. And we take, say, this vertex. So this k, k, k prime equals 3. And uh, this is a set which covers all the edges, right? So each edge has at least one of its ends inside this set. So how do we reduce to find an independent set to find a vertex cover? So first let's recall uh, how we reduced, say, independent set to click.
So here we had GK, and we mapped it to the complement of G in the same K. So an independent set in the original graph of, of size K corresponded to a clique of the same size in the complement graph, right? Where we replaced, where there's no edge, we draw an edge, and all, the, uh, all the edges were removed. Here it's similar, but a bit different. How can I transform an independent set into a vertex color? Or do you want a vertex color to an independent set? It's again going to be dual. Let me draw one something something more here, like I don't know, like this. And like this. It's still a vertex color, right? Okay. And maybe even more. This is a vertex cover. Do you see an independent set here? What is independent set? I don't think. All, all the all the complements, right? So this. This is an independent set, right? So there is this uh, U is a vertex cover. This is a green one. And if we take V minus U, this is an independent set. Right? Because uh, what does it mean V minus U? It means that we take all the vertices which are not in the vertex cover. Could there be an edge between them? Well, no, because then it will be not covered by the vertex cover, right? So the complement of a vertex cover is always an independent set. And now how do we reduce? How do we provide this reduction? So this is in the same graph, right? So we have to take the same graph G, and what is going to be the number K here? Yep, so here K is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is the number of vertices, and minus K. So this is the easy reduction which reduces independent set to vertex cover. Right? And, uh, and also, by the way, the other way around. It's all symmetric reductions, but we know that independent set is MP-complete. Therefore, vertex cover is also MP-complete. So we proved this theorem that we have yet another MP-complete problem. Okay, questions, comments? No? Now the final, problem number six. So problem number six is as follows. Oh, we have the two coloring problem. And we have to reduce it polynomially to two set. So recall that we know how to reduce three color to three set. And this is actually a particular case of Cook 11. But this is not interesting because both of these, so this is NP hard, and actually three color is also going to be NP hard, so it's nothing interesting. So. But here, we know that this belongs to P, and this will give you a polynomial algorithm for checking that um, uh, two color ability belongs to P. So two color, what is two color ability? So two color means that you have a graph and you uh, ask whether you can color it in two colors such that uh, any edge has different colors. So for example, the colors are green and uh, blue and yellow. So this is, uh, so we try to color this in blue. 
then these two are going to be yellow. Um, then uh, this is going to be blue. And here we fail because this is our color, right? So this graph is not too colorable. Actually, such graphs are also called bipartite. The Russian term is dvudoyny. So a bipartite graph is a graph which can be put into two what they call parts, dolly in Russian, and any edge goes between them. There are no edges inside the parts. And actually, this is the same as coloring it into two colors, right? Because, for example, this one is going to be the blue side, and this one is going to be the yellow side. So it's... Uh, Graphs which are colorable in two colors, they are the same as bipartite graphs, just by definition. Okay. So, uh, how can you reduce two colorability to two set? Yes, yes. But here it's actually even easier because you know there are two colors. It means that you can have only one variable. You can say that this is blue, and if not blue, it should be yellow. Okay. So let's uh, enumerate this vertices. Sorry, uh, as one, two, three, four, five, six, and here you will have B one, which is true. You will have not B two. You will have B three. So B I is vertex vi is colored blue. And not bi means it's colored yellow. And now the formula, how do you construct the formula? Again, you have a big conjunction for any pair ij, which is inside e, so for any edge, uh, we should uh, Say that it has different colors. So it's bi or not bj. So this says that they could not both be. Uh, no, sorry, it's bi or not bj, right? That if. Uh, no, no, no. It's B I or no, because uh, the first one is one color. The second is no. yes. So if B I is zero, then B J should be one. one. Yeah. So and now if ah, it's strange because this means that B J implies B I. It's, it's not a good thing, right? So it's. Uh, No, no, it's it's uh, it's like this. Yeah. So it's uh, strangely enough, it's like this. It's B I or B J and not B I or not B J. They said that at least one of it should be blue, at least one should be yellow, right? Yeah, there should be both of them true. Yeah. So it says that at least one should be one, at least one should be zero. So for each edge, it should have, have one edge, one which is blue and one which is not blue, right? And this means it has both colors. And no, if you have BI or not BJ, what, what did you want to do? BI or not BJ and uh, BJ and not BI, right? Something like that, right? Uh, no, you see, you put zero, zero, and you, you're satisfied. This is not correct. Okay, so this is the formula 5 for graph G. And we say that G is 
Two cards removal. All by part is the same. If and only if of phi j is satisfiable. Okay. So, corollary that uh, true colorability or checking for bipartiteness is in the P class. Because uh, two set satisfiability for two CNF, and this is a two CNF. This is polynomial time solvable, right? And therefore, and you can actually implement this. And this is a funny algorithm because how do you usually uh, implement this coloring of graphs, right? Well, as we did it in this example, we start from uh, one vertex, then you find all the connected to it. Then, well, this needs some machinery of graphs, like network X, for example. You need to traverse the graph and stuff like that. Here, you just have a table of all edges, and you just do this formula, and then apply, apply your favorite you know, resolution method for two set. And this will give you the answer. You can extend your homework number one in an easy way, just for this particular two CNF, which will give you a thing which will color graphs. So here, how reductions work in the positive way. This is the light side of computer science. It's practical computer science. You really can implement it as an algorithm and use your optimized resolution prover to solve to, to colorability. OK, great. So this is uh, the gain here. OK, so any more questions on this exercise sheet? If not, we'll go forward. So the next one uh, will be here. It's already also online. It's graph colorings. It's about also graph colorings. I will show it on here. It is on the in the chat. Here it is online. And um, for those of you who are in class, we have even color printing. It's from some of the previous years, but the the same. So you can. It out because here we have red, green, and blue. It's important. Okay, and let's uh, take a look at what is going on here. So, well, here we just recall something. In the beginning, we have k color. So we color vertices in k colors so that adjacent vertices, that means vertices connected by an edge, they should have different colors. So, problem number one two color. Well, we just solved it, right? So it's uh, it's polynomial decidable. For example, by reduction to to set. It's a bit of an exotic way of doing it because usually people who do algorithms on graphs will do it directly. Yes, we'll implement a direct algorithm on graphs which checks for bipartite. But we did it by reduction because we know to set, we know resolution. Okay, now problem two. Show that for any k there exists a graph which is k colorable but not k minus one colorable. We will solve problem 2a and problem 2b will go for the next class. It's in a, not, not so easy. What, what graph is k colorable but not k minus one colorable? What? No, no, k is arbitrary. Yes, you have a graph which is colorable in three, but not in two, for example. Or trivial case we have, but I, I, here you don't need induction, actually. So um, just let's think a bit just logically. What is a graph which, for which k colors is sufficient, but k minus one is not? How can you find such a graph? Uh, this is uh, not sufficient because they could be also so and all the all its uh, 
uh, uh, all its neighbors should also be connected, right? So uh, the example, its problem here is problem number 2a from this next list. Actually, it is k with the index k. So suppose k equals, I don't know, 5. Then we have five vertices. Um, no, k equals k. So k, k plus 1, I think, yes. So suppose k equals 4. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's k equals, k equals 5. So we consider the complete graph, so we connect all the vertices. And this graph is five colorable. You have five vertices, then you can use five colors and color them properly, it's just all different colors. But it is not four colorable. Because if you have four colors, then by Peter Powell principle, you'll have two vertices with the same color, and they all connected as complete graph. Therefore, you fail. Okay, so. 2b will be left for the next class. Yes, and it's for any k, of course. Because we just take the complete graph on k vertices. Is this clear? So this means that these k colorability problems, they is essentially different for each k. So there's no mutual say, reduction between them, then this does not stabilize. For each k, you will have new graphs which are not k colorable, but they get k plus one colorable. Of course, any graph is a finite graph is colorable in the number of colors which co coincides with the number of its vertices. Of course, if you have enough colors, you will can color. Okay, and now problem number three, which is also sort of not so hard. Let's take a look at it. That k color belongs to, to NP for any k. Let's just pronounce it. Why does it belong to NP? For example, yes. So you can reduce it to satisfiability of Boolean formula, for example. Yes, a two colorable is polynomial time because we reduced it to two set. P P is a subset of one P. Uh, so yeah, it, it's stronger. It's stronger. Okay, so clear, anything belongs to NP. It, you can even do it without reduction. You can say that, uh, what is a K coloring? You can do it in non-deterministic guessing, right? You just color the vertices arbitrarily in K colors, and then the polynomial algorithm checks that the coloring is correct. So this is NP problem for any K. Uh, sorry, maybe this is, uh, how you can do it by... Uh, by non-deterministic algorithm, we just guess the coloring. No, no, the guess. It's not a deterministic polynomial. Oh, okay. You guess. You just you just put arbitrary colors for all the vertices and check that it is correct. Yes. And if at least one trajectory is okay, when we win, then it's, it's covered. It's the same as satisfiability. How do you do satisfiability? You just try to satisfy. Okay. So uh, this is um, the first three problems. As you know, that, that they are quite simple. And the rest of the... Uh, exercise sheet here is the problem number four and our aim in problem four is to show that um, uh, three sat is reducible to three color so let's compare we know that two color is reducible to two sat which shows that two color is and is p right polynomial. We know that three color is reducible to three set in an analogous way. This doesn't give us anything because three set is hard, and therefore three color is of course reducible to it because it's just a, just another NP problem. So to show that again backwards reduction, we show that two color is easy by reducing it to two set right. And duly, we show that three color is hard 
by reducing three sets to three color in the backward direction. So this is just the main uh, general picture here. And the uh, concrete implementation and given in problem four. Let's at least start discussing problem four. Maybe we'll not finish now, so I will save this. And I will open in my journal, this annotate PDF. Just to show this graph and be able to draw it. So, um, what is here? We have three colors. Uh, green will be for true. Uh, red will be for false. And B is the third color, which will be used for technical things. It's printed here in really red, green, red, and blue. And now uh, X and X bar will be uh, vertices co connecting, corresponding to uh, literals. So uh, what can we say here? Both of X and X bar are connected to B, right? So what does it mean for their colors? X and X bar. It's all green or red. It's green or red. And exactly one is green and exactly one is red. So this means that either X is green, it means that it's true, or X bar is green and X is red, it means that X is false. So this is a representation of a truth for two variables, X and Y, right? Green and red. Green and red. And B is just the thing which is the neutral. So now let's think about this gadget. So um, uh, what about D? Let's, let's look at the formulation. Let the write down a Boolean formula which is true if and only if the remaining vertices, so these vertices here, can be colored in such a way that D becomes green. What does it mean to make D? So, no, no, this is not these vertices. So suppose we, we colored somehow. So let's say X be true. So we color this in green. And let Y be false. So we color this in red. Then uh, these two, two should be, so these should be red. Uh, this should be green. And now, can D be green? How do you think? So let's think about these three vertices here. Uh, well, they could be. So these, let's first think about these two. This could, this could be blue or D cannot be green because you see this uh, should be blue or green, right? Yeah. And this should be blue or green. Then at least one of these is green. So for example, this is blue, then this should be green or dually or vice versa. This means that this should be not green. Right? So this means that if X and not Y, D is not true. And what is the Boolean formula for X and Y, which allows D to become green? So what is the condition for it to be allowed to be green? What? It's not exclusive or, it's just or. Because what is, if, so now let's see at these two vertices, this one and this one. If there is a green one, then D can be made green, right? So let, let me just show how it works. So suppose, 
let me just remove everything from here. And suppose, okay, suppose Y is green. Suppose this one is green. Then we can make this red, right? This can be made blue because it's neutral, right? And then we make this green. So if Y is true, D can be made true. Or if X is false, D can be also made true, right? But if they are both, or these are red, then we fail, right? So what Boolean formula corresponds to vertex D? So D models the following clause of the CNF, right? So this looks like something not so interesting because now we model only clauses of uh, two literals. We have three coloring, but clauses are only of two. And now the question is, so we, are, we solved Point four A, right? So now the question for you is how to solve. So we can let me remove this stuff. Make it smaller and we'll remove the stuff. And now suppose we have Z. So we have an extra pair of vertices and they should be connected in the same way so both of them should be connected to b somehow and suppose we need another d prime which is i don't know uh y or not x or say not z so here is not z i will make it How can we implement this? We need a bigger gadget for that, right? So the idea is the same, that... Um, what? Where? Uh, do you want to add it like this? This one? No, but then they could be okay, I remove this connection. And then I will I will make it not satisfiable. I would say that okay, I will make, for example, all these false. So this is false, uh, this is false, this is false, and then I will say that so this will fail to satisfy this. Uh, okay, this will be the junction is false. Well, then yes, in this case, indeed, some of one of these mm, should be green, right? And this should be red. Oh no, not green. Yeah, no, but the two vertices are not interconnected with each other. But still, you can make the following. You can make, for example. Mm. you can make d prime so suppose uh, how can you say that if they are all false of course it will be false but if they are true you will you can also fail uh, so how can you do it uh, you can say that for example this is true and also this is true and for example y is false then uh or, for example, all of them are true. 
what will this mean? This means that uh, among these guys, uh, sorry, so, so this should be, they're both, maybe this will work, by the way. Maybe this will work, let me see. So, okay, suppose uh, at least one of them is true. Suppose this one is true. Then uh, this can be made false, right? I don't know, suppose, let me try like this. More interesting case is as follows. So suppose Y is true. Then we make this false and make these two blue and this is green okay and suppose now just x is true so if x is true then we of course can make this false it's okay but now suppose that these are also false and now we fail because here we have to make one of these green and uh, unfortunately, we'll have to say that this is, for example, green and this is blue. And here we don't have anything. We are not very colorable. So this is not the right gadget to do, right? But the idea is, is, is good. So we need to ex how, somehow to expand this gadget in order to make it work, right? Any more ideas? No, and let me give you a hint. Why to what? No, why and not X is already used by D. Uh, well, it's not not integrated to D. It's also a disjunction. So. Uh, what I wanted to, to hint you is that you can reuse the old gadget and write a new gadget for a new disjunction with not Z. No, but it's not. Do you mean do we do, 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 to do this? No, it will not work because it, it, it cannot be true at the same time as D. So this is D. So it's D or not Z. Now I have to recall how we implement the implication actually here. Oh, the disjunction, sorry. Not like this. It's also a disjunction, so we need to find out how to implement it. Yeah, so we draw another triangle. And what next? And this is D prime. And then by sort of induction, we can do it that if we can make this true, this uh, clause, right? Uh, 
What happens then? If we can make it true, then it means that we can either make this vertex green, right? Then we put this blue, then here we put red, here we put blue, and here we'll have green. Or the other situation is that this one is green, not Z. And usually we have red here, we have blue here, and this final is green. And finally, suppose that this is false, the disjunction. What does this mean? It means that, uh, that yeah, so well, let's, let's go from start from the beginning. It means that Y is false, uh, not X is false, and not Z is false. This means that, well, it's not, it could be, it could be also green, it's, uh, blue is the problem. So this, from these two, no, it could not be green. This is a good thing. Uh, not be blue. So from these two, one should be green and one should be blue, right? So here one should be blue, say this one, and one should be green. This means that in this case, this one should be red. So if this is false, it should be red. And these are all red, so from these two, one should be green, one should be blue, and this means that this guy is also made false. Okay? So this is a gadget which models a three clause. So for each three clause, we can make such a gadget. Right? And now, uh, let us think about problem 4C. So 4C is exactly that you can reduce 4C. It is 3 set reducing to 3 color. Actually, most of this is done here, but we... So for each clause, we just need to make the picture? No? For each clause, we make the picture. Yes, like so we have this D, which we call D prime. So let's call this D1. Somewhere else there will be some D2. There will be D3. For each clause we make such a picture. The same. And this, for each variable here we have these corresponding pairs of... Is this all? Uh, well, no, because... To which? What, what, what do you call final? Uh, the, the, the result of, uh, but, okay, but well, okay, and your result will be so if all of them are green, yes. then your result will be blue, for example. It's a conjunction. You won't want all of them to be green. How do you enforce this? Or to be not red? To what? Connect them to red, right? I just take all of them and connect them to this red vertex. And thus I enforce them not to be red. Because if two vertices are connected, they are not the same. Yeah, and that's uh, if the graph is colorable in three colors, 
then all these D's are not red. And they are, okay. Uh, yeah, but they're green or blue, but they cannot be blue. They're also always green. Uh, to be on the safe side, you can also connect them to blue to make them the way from green. And when all of them are green, this means that they are true. And all the uh, clauses are true. We will say if it's true. Uh, you could do this, but I think we can prove that they can never be blue. Because, let's see here. So this is blue. This means that this X, not X, Y, not Y, Z, not Z, etc., they cannot be blue, right? So this means that for we turn two gadgets. So here, with these two, at least one of them should be... No, no, if, they, if these are... Okay. Yeah, we can connect them also to blue, because if this is green, no, this is the trick. Uh, if this is uh, if this is blue, we can also consider it as true, because if these are both false, they are red, then at least one of these two uh, should be blue. This, this should be red. At least one of these two should be blue. Then this is just purely red. So false is just red. Blue can be considered as a variant of true. Because suppose that a good case that, say, one of these is, is uh, green, then this is red, this could be also green. Or this is red, this is, uh, uh, for example, blue, then this guy is going to be green. But having green and red allows us to use, to make this, group, this blue. So blue for D is also true. But if you wish to be on the safe side, you can connect these Ds to blue also, to enforce them just to be green. If you add up, just want to draw the lines here, but you can connect them to blue. And so the, the, therefore you have a coloring if and only if the formula is satisfied, right? But this is a, a small bit of cheating here. No, no, the pictures, yeah, the picture, so we have a formula phi, which is a 3CNF. For each formula, we constructed this particular graph G phi. It's our invention. We have the right to construct the graph as well. And we said that the graph is three colorable, if and only if the formula is satisfiable. But what is a big difference in the definition of three colorability, a normal one, and what is going on here? No, no, the graph is as, as it is, but there is a bit of cheating in, the, in, the, in what, what we did here. Well, the cheating is on the top of the graph. You see that we, we said that the graph is three colorable, but we fixed the colors of the first three vertices, which we call the palette here. So we said that these guys should have the the constant colors, right? But uh, in the colorability problem, you cannot fix the colors, right? You cannot fix colors of specific vertices. The colors just are arbitrary. How can this be fixed? So you see the problem, right? Yes. We have fixed colors, yes. Yeah, but what do we know about these vertices on the top? They're connected in a triangle. What does it mean? They have, then have to have different colors, and we have only three colors. So that vertices on the top, they should uh, be colored in all the three colors, right? One for each vertex. But then nobody knows what is green, what is blue, and what is red. We have just three colors. They're all say, equal in their rights. So this means that we can have a coloring. And after that, we call the colors green, blue, and red according to this, these three vertices. So we say that the color of vertex 1 is called green. The color of vertex 2 is called red. And the color of vertex 3 is called blue. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, okay. So, no, this, this, this thing on the top, we call it the pallet. Which means that we, if, so two directions. Suppose the formula is satisfiable. Then we uh, color the palette as it should be. So the first is green, second is red, the third is blue. And then we can continue coloring. And since we are satisfiable, we know that we can make all the Ds green. And making them green will not contradict connecting them to red. So we got a good coloring. So this means that this, so if C is satisfiable, then a G phi is three colorable. This is okay, and the palette is colored as it is. Now we have to prove the backwards implication. Suppose this graph is somehow colored. Then we first look at the palette. And there are colors, one, two, three. And now we name these colors. We say, let one be green, two be red, and three be blue. Well, the, the names of the colors I don't, don't, man, man, don't mean anything. We, we, we call it like that. And after we call them, we inspect the graph. Since all these, in this part of the graph, all of them are connected to three, then they are not blue, in our notion of blue. So what are daltonics? We each person has his own and or her own understanding of the colors. We call this blue. Uh, it could be I don't know magenta, but it's blue. And then uh, we know that inside, inside this part of the graph where we have the variables, they should they could be yellow or oh, sorry green or blue, a green or red, and for each pair we have one green one red. So this is from this we read out the assignment, and then we know that. Uh, for each pair of gadgets, say for one, say for D1, we know that, for example, okay, let me make it better. So, for example, this is green and these two are red. Then we make this red. Then, okay, okay sorry, it's not 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 how it should sorry, how it should work. So let's remove these colors. So and now let's uh, proceed by. Uh, by uh, uh, normal say, procedure. So suppose that we have these three for this D, so this D1. We have these three, at least one of them should be green because we know that the CNF is satisfied by this. Uh, so, uh, so we, no, sorry, we, have, we had a coloring and suppose that we want to show that it is satisfiable. Uh, then uh, we need to show that at least one of these should be green, right? Otherwise, we fail. So, if uh, yeah, it's set, it's, it's it's we have a coloring and we have need to show it's satisfiable. So we need to show that at least one of these is green, right? Now we suppose that is not the case, and suppose that this one is red. All of them are red. This means that here we had to, we need to have both blue and green. This means that this should be red, and the same here. Blue and green can be swapped, but the final one is going to be red. And this uh, contradicts the correctness of the coloring because this is the same red as uh, vertex, vertex two, right? And then we just called it red. It's just our name of the color, right? So having this, we have reduced three satisfiability to three coloring. And this, from this, it follows the main result here that three color is in P complete. Because by Kuklevin and Satin, are the uh, three satin and P complete. So three colors in P complete. Okay. Questions, comments? Well, if not, then uh, good luck with uh, your uh, home assignment, and uh, we reconvene in a week. Thank you, and goodbye.